So I went on a Saturday. I wasn't going there with any intention of, of you know, trying to preserve her legacy. And so I was picking out my favorite books and books that I felt I could sell. And so I uh, always like to go the following day because they have what's called a half price Sunday to, to see what was left. And when I arrived, I was stunned to see that virtually everything was still there. I mean, you know, people generally buy a book or two at estate sales, but mm -hmm. dealers tend to buy a lot more. And so that's when I got the idea that, you know, this needs to be uh, taken in whole and then I'll figure out what I'm going to do with it. So I basically okay. offered uh, the estate sale uh, dealer a, a full price for everything she accepted. And I went home with everything and I figured I'm going to, I'm going to, do something with with this collection of books because i i'm you know we're all well aware of of her legacy oh, absolutely so i mean we're talking about just a, a whole lot of uh, periodicals i mean uh, you try to give us a, an order of magnitude kind of idea here how much individual you know books periodicals and, and even beyond that and we got a couple of pictures over here uh, up over on the social media right now of course uh, dr Dinah and uh, lisa if anyone has forgotten what she looks like but we've got some uh you know individual things some of the shelves that you currently have uh you know on display or available over at your store uh, brave books but it's a lot more than that as well including uh you know some aspects of her, even her wardrobe, uh, other bits of uh, artwork or uh, collectibles, memorabilia that she had here. So again, give us try to give us a, a sense of scope of what was still available or that you ended up turning into what we're now calling the Natalicio collection. Right, there was quite a bit available. Uh, I think a, the the bulk of her estate went to her brother, probably. You know who she she was very close to. Mm -hmm. uh, but as far as books and and tchotchkes and various different things that she picked up on her travels and during her life, there's still quite a bit of that left, uh, Andrew. So the books basically could be pared down to various different topics of interest that she enjoyed. Baseball. She was a fanatic about baseball. I mean, mm -hmm. to the point of just being almost uh, I mean, just OCD about it. There was various other mm -hmm. different things that she liked. Uh, for example, when she had a doctorate in language studies and, and Portuguese. And yeah. so I found several, I mean, just a huge collection of, of books about word origins and the creativity of the American language and all sorts of South American languages and Swahili, too, as well. And so there's just uh, uh, travels, nature, various different things that interest her, her. She didn't have a lot of novels or, you know, fiction, things like that. But as far as her collection goes, there was those kind of things. And uh, so one of the things that I wanted to do was separate what we were going to keep to share with the public on a, on a regular basis you know, throughout the years and then also what we we're going to sell. So in all, we probably had close to 600 books. Wow. And from that group of books, uh, we separated out about maybe 100 that we're keeping as part of the permanent collection of Bray books that we'll bring out. And those are the very special books that she signed when she was a. Uh, a teenager, you know, in her teens and in her 20s when she was being educated and she was living all sorts of different places, St. Louis, where she grew up, mm -hmm. uh, Austin, Rio de Janeiro, various parts of South America. And she had this habit of signing her maiden name, Diana Seedhoff. When I saw the, that name, it didn't ring a bell because I didn't know. I thought uh, she was just Diana Natalicia. So yeah. I had no idea who this Diana Seedhoff was, but it turns out that's her, her maiden name, her German name because she's German. I mean, a lot of people in El Paso don't realize that she's German. They uh, assume she was a Latina because of the last name. That was her husband's, her ex-husband's name. Right. So, yeah, anyway, so uh, she had several books that kind of chart this course uh, from, like, say, 18 to 28, where she'd sign her name, where she lived, and the date. So we're keeping those because it really? has a pattern of where she moved around. Then we have a series of books that were uh, inscribed to her by various famous people like Noam Chomsky, uh, Jose Cisneros, Abraham Chavez. You know, these are rock stars in El Paso. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I think we got at least one of those here. Uh, the one we got on screen right now, the writers across the centuries that, uh, I mean, that immediately recognizable Jose Cisneros got both you know, style and, of course, subject on it here. And then on the inside, the inscription to Dr. Natalicio from Jose Cisneros. I mean, that's just, I mean, Anyone who knows or studied El Paso history, El Paso authors, El Paso topics will be immediately recognizable. Absolutely. And Jose was in his own right. He was just one of the best that El Paso's ever had. Um, and, he, of course, he did it in his uh, calligraphy style. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there's this there's this uh, pattern. Of, well, not pattern, but there's there's a series of books that just show her 
relationships that she built up during her tenure with some of the most famous El Pasoans and people beyond El Paso. And so we felt that that was very important to keep because that also shows the respect that she garnered and uh, she gave out, you know, during her, her time here in El Paso with, with these various individuals. This, this Abraham Chavez book that I have here is a real treasure. You sure you have that with you I right now here. So uh, let's go and uh, have you hand, hand that up here because I'd love to uh, show that a little bit more here. Let's get that bigger on screen here. Sure. So go ahead and uh, hand that up here. So there we go, Abraham Chavez. Um, and so that, what is that book? This is a book, uh, it's, it's basically a small biography about Abraham Chavez. But on the inside, he did an in inscription to Dr. Diana Natalicio. And this is hilarious. It's fun. It says, to Dr. Diana Natalicio, this goes in keeping my promise to provide evidence of my former athleticism many years past. As always, <laughs> with love and respect, Lucy and Abraham, page 35 marks the spot. So I thought, okay, let me go to page 35. Yeah, you, ha you have to look. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, here it is right there. And here's Abraham Chavez right there with his mustache that we all recognize. <laughs> and uh, okay. I guess he was a jock at some point in his life. You know, uh, he went to a school called the El Paso Conservator Conservatory of Music. I've never heard of that school. I, I guess it no longer exists. But uh, he played on the, on the baseball team. And so that's just one of those insights that you get not only of their relationship, but a little insight into Abraham Chavez's life as well. I'm, uh, you know, everybody sees him as as the conductor of the mm -hmm. Paso Symphony, but nobody ever thought of him as actually swinging a bat <laughs> at one point in his life. Yeah, and so that's the interesting thing about a a collection like this right. is that it's. I mean, just I mean, the, the life lived. I mean, again, we actually got some clips we got uh, for people up uh, on second hour from a lot of the different aspects of her life, and she spent a lot of time in her youth and her career before UTEP, traveling around in a lot of different ways, and some of that is exemplified here, but particularly on the El Paso and Borderland-focused area, there was a lot of, I mean, a lot of history, a lot of stuff, and this kind of just, you know, fills in the gaps that you might not otherwise get from, you know, an official biography or from an overview of her, her life and work, because, I mean, we're more than just our major accomplishments. There's a lot of lived experience. There's a lot of time spent discussing issues, talking with people, and, and building these relationships. And so the fact that we've still got uh, these inscriptions handy. And so, again, you've got some of these that are for sale here. And But Alon, I just want to make the particular point here that, again, your plan is to do a, a recurring exhibition of some of like these works, these like that one right there. You're going to hold on to that one, I'm Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. That's part of the permanent collection. So tell us a little bit how that's going to work, what, what you've been doing already, because you've been doing some events kind of uh, as part of the, you know, the sales part of it. But again, it's going to be going forward from this, right? Exactly, Andrew. Uh, our first event was kind of uh, selling her books, about maybe 450 books, because we felt it was important uh, for people to be able to have access in a very affordable way to books that belong to a person of her stature in El Paso. Uh, and so uh, to be able to pick up a book and it's got her embossed, we came up with an emboss, a blind emboss stamp that we, you know, embossed every single book that we sold so that they would make that connection that this actually was part of her personal collection. So people came in, we sold about 140 of those books and people were thrilled to be able to walk away with a book that had a, you know, part of her personality and her life embedded within that book through, through the fact that she owned it and th thumbed through it, read it, whatever. So, you know, it's like having a piece of greatness, you know, mm -hmm. people love to have signed books by authors because there was that personal contact upon that book. But to think that Diana Natalicio, the famed you know, UTEP um, president, Emerita, owned this, yeah. it makes it special. So there's that part of it. And then the rest of it is something that we want to present either on a yearly basis or every other year where we bring them out, invite people to come to break books. We're going to contact people that knew her well to speak about her so that they can also share anecdotal stories about their lives with her. And, you know, like I've met a couple of people that were as, as fanatical about baseball as her, and they had a lot of uh, you know times together. Mm -hmm. So they shared a lot of great stories. And, and I, I, learned some pretty amazing stories about Diana through these individuals. So we'd like to have them share those. Like, for example, Andrew, mm -hmm. did you know that one of the reasons that Dr. Natalicio was so fanatical about baseball was because when she was a teenager, younger, she babysat uh, one of St. Louis's most famous players, 
I'm trying to remember his name right now. Can you think of a St. Louis player that was like? I am the wrong person okay, to ask yeah, about I'm, baseball. I'm not I a will baseball admit. fan either, but uh, yeah, we had several books by him as well, and and uh, she babysat his kids, wow. and during this time, she was able to like just just pick up on that love of baseball because he really is St. Louis's most famous player. Uh, I wish I could remember it right now, but <laughs> no, but anyway, that's how she got into baseball. And then it just kind of took off from there. So you, you learn these little stories from other people that knew her and, mm -hmm. and knew that aspect of her life. That, and so we're trying to try to get these all together and, and create a much bigger picture of Dr. Natalicio besides just being the president of UTEP. What is the humanity behind her? And the stories, the personal stories that that make her a richer individual in our eyes, because she was an intimidating in individual. She got a lot done for UTEP because of that. Don't don't mm -hmm. let that under five foot frame <laughs> fool you. I mean, Absolutely. I mean, there's a lot to get to here. We're going to be talking more about that throughout the rest of this hour here. So you are tuned into the El Paso History Radio Show. Again, guest right now is Judd Burgess, owner of Brave Books. If you want to find out more about the collection, what's the best way for them to find you or, or find out you know, the information about the exhibition and ongoing sale? Basically, you can just follow us on Instagram, bravebooks.tx. Facebook, we're on Facebook as well. Or you can just Google us. Uh, you know, basically, that's how we've uh, started our business and kept it going. Mm -hmm. We we were very blessed in this situation because the media basically called us up and said, how can we, you know, promote this? Because it's special. They realize the importance of something like this. So I had pretty much all the media calling us up. And that really uh, just put Brave Books out on the forefront of El Paso. So we're pretty thrilled about that. But, you know, you can Google us. I mean, we're, we're, the, we're available through the Internet. Mm -hmm. Absolutely here. So we'll have to talk more about that here because we got a lot more to get into into some of the specific works and the specific books here and a lot of people tuning in and chiming in. We'll get to more about that at this next segment. So we'll be back after this break with more from Talk El Paso here on News Radio 690 KTSM. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call 915-592-4549, 915-592-4549. El Paso History TV is now available for free on youtube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Attention, per the current government mandate, U.S.-based insurers are now required to cover at-home COVID testing kits every month with no out-of-pocket fees to you. If you have a current insurance plan, you are eligible to receive up to eight COVID-19 tests shipped to your home or business each month absolutely free. Just visit GetYourFreeTest.com to begin the registration process. When completed, Tierra Health, a trusted source for next-generation health care, will submit a claim to your insurance provider. There is no deductible and no copay. Your eight monthly tests will ship directly to your home or business for free. Go to GetYourFreeTest.com. COVID-19 and its variants are still here. So take the worry out of searching for time-sensitive tests by registering you and your family today. Visit GetYourFreeTest.com to register for from the comfort of your own home. That's GetYourFreeTest.com to receive eight COVID-19 tests shipped to you at no cost. Just visit GetYourFreeTest.com today. We all hear the radio ads about the IRS. They tell you to be afraid, to be scared, and they try to frighten you into calling. But I'm not here to do that. Tax Relief Advocates is different. TRA is here to tell you that if you owe money to the IRS, whether it's $5,000, $50,000, or $500,000, we have a solution. It doesn't matter if you're sitting in your car at work or with your kids. No matter where you are, call now, 800-510-2204. Don't lose hope. TRA can eliminate or reduce what you owe to the IRS, and there is zero risk to you. If we can't reduce your tax debt, then you pay nothing. Our passion is taxes and helping individuals fix their IRS problems. We have a five-star rating on Google and Yelp. 
and an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. Tax Relief Advocates, real solutions for real people. You don't need to be afraid of the IRS any longer. End your tax nightmare today and call 800-510-2204. Again, that's 800-510-2204. Or you can visit us online at tra.com. There's nothing like hearing the songs you love on local radio with no subscriptions and no monthly fees. But there's a new bill in Congress that could stop the music. If passed, this bill would tax your local radio station simply to play the music you love. Text LOCAL to 52886 and ask Congress to support local radio stations. Help us keep you connected to the music, local news, weather, and traffic that you need each day. This message furnished by the National Association of Broadcasters. News Radio 690 KTSM El Paso. You can hear me even just fine. And now, let's turn back the pages of time and return to the El Paso History Radio Show. Brought to you by Patrick Tuttle, Colwell Banker Heritage Real Estate. 915-588-1850. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant, 6761 Donovan Drive. By M1 EP Management Corporation, 915-592-4549. By Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. With El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gift shopping. Here again, El Paso History with Andrew J. Polk. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk. Uh, We are the El Paso History Radio Show on Facebook. You can go there for our weekly promo announcements on the topics of the program each week. We also have all the, the, see all the videos we put up over the last few years and even prior to that over on the YouTube channel, the youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, where, of course, the El Paso Gold DVDs from Capstone Productions covering uh, the last 20 years of productions now online to view free on that channel. Also, the 20 recent ABC7 segments from El Paso History TV. I had a hand in producing them myself, mostly behind the camera, but those are all up there if you want to see some focuses on different topics of El Paso history in kind of more bite-sized form than something that's engaging for the next generation, I hope, here. And also a reminder to support uh, some of our advertisers, Pepe's Restaurant in Canutillo, open for in-house dining, 6761 Donovan Drive. You can call Pepe's at 915-877-2152. That's 915-877-2152. And is also the home of the one and only Margarita. Still joined here in studio by Judd Burgess, owner of Brave Books. And again, I'm, I'm giving you the title here because of the work you've done into it. Steward of the Natalicio Collection here, which comes in a couple of ways here. Again, you are both keeping, preserving parts of it and have both. And also putting some out for sale here, which I think makes sense given your your business as a bookstore. But again, the way you, that you even created the concept of this, because not a lot of times in previous, I mean, I, I've been around sometimes when uh, other, you know, notable individuals in El Paso have passed on. I want to say uh, Rackesy. I actually went out to his estate sale and a lot of his was more focused on you know his artwork right. and things like that. But there wasn't, it doesn't seem to recall or you know trying to find similar kind of things when there was this encapsulation of a collection and done in this way so you talked a little bit about how you were at the estate sale and you know seeing you know what was left over and you know kind of doing the usual okay but let's find some material that'll work for the store here but i mean this certainly then took a turn to then where it is and uh, you've actually got another one of the books there with you here that you can actually it shows off you talking about the embossing of the stamp there right, right. Mm-hmm. so i mean that is a we're talking about another order of magnitude of effort than would usually be done with such a thing here. So we, we kind of mentioned a little bit that there was the, you know, you saw how much was available. And so when it kind of then, when did it kind of shift in your mind to being a, okay, there need, there's something more to be done here. Well, honestly, it, it happened the Saturday I went after I had left with a handful of books, I probably picked up maybe 25 books that day. Mm. I just started thinking, you know, it was fascinating just walking around all of her, belongings i mean she had a grand piano in one room so Mm. she was a musician and there you would mention periodicals which she also had a lot of music books you know scott joplin several other you know things people gave her gifts of music and so you know little various aspects of her life started kind of like gelling up in my mind and it just started occurring to me that why is all of this just being scattered to the four winds? You know, somebody who who was recognized by Time Time Magazine as one of the hundred most influential people in the nineties. That's true. Forbes Magazine, one of the top fifty, and here we're at an essay sale where everything is just kind of vanishing. You know, uh, 
And I just, at that point, I thought, I'm going to go back tomorrow and I'm going to see what's available. And then I'm going to see what I can do. And then I'll figure it all out as, as I go. And so uh, it all just started coming together. And, and a lot of it's very organic. Uh, it's not anything that I just went in there with a plan. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of how it works with a book dealer. You know, uh, uh, I'd mentioned to you earlier that Ho Baron is somebody that we just had a special show for before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Three months into our, our bookstore, we had we wanted to introduce people to his art because we feel it's world class. Well, that kind of that, you know, bent that direction of, of looking at people that are important and deserve to be preserved. I mean, it started it, it became something for us. We We didn't go into a bookstore with this idea that we're going to look and try to preserve people's uh, legacies, but then it just started happening, Andrew. So now that's just something that's second nature. Whenever I find things that belong Rackacy, mm -hmm. I bring in a lot of his books because a lot of people collected them. So I'm, I'm growing a small collection of his books as well. And people still love to buy his books and because he's a historian of sorts, oh, yeah. an amateur one, right? I mean, yeah, he also did a lot of the artwork around the region. I mean, he was fascinated by it. I mean, I'm by no means an expert on him, right. but I mean, the the work that he did and just, you know, one of the many individuals who have done a lot to promote or even just, again, encapsulate our history, put it in a way that it takes it off the pages, off the records and makes it more accessible, you know, to you know, people who are not as familiar with these topics mm -hmm. is, I mean, important in my mind. Absolutely. Right you know, Leon Metz, people like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but with, 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 uh, Dr. Dan and Natalicio, it just, uh, it just, I started becoming fascinated with various different things I was learning about her. I didn't go to UTEP. Uh, a couple of my kids went, uh, but I don't, so I don't really have a history with that school, but I still respect the school and think it's one of the most beautiful college campuses in the country because mm -hmm. it's so unique and it's built in such a unique way. And, and she's been a very big part of that. So I felt, uh, you know, this is something that we need to share with the public so that all these new people that didn't know about her or people that did know her or thought they knew her are going to find out a lot more about her. And and I think that's the way people uh, just have their legacies continue to live on after they're long gone. And it was kind of sad, you know, that she spent 31 years at UTEP. Two years after she retired, she passed away. Mm -hmm. I mean, she was an adventurer. You know, she spent a lot of time traveling. And so she probably wanted to spend that time traveling with her travel mate, her brother, right. uh, to, to parts unknown all over the world. But she just uh, it just didn't happen. So we want to kind of make sure that people remember that she wasn't just the UTEP president. She was somebody that really enjoyed going on safari and, you know, going to various different places all across the world and, and just experiencing. And so we're able to pick up a lot of her little souvenirs that she uh, bought along the way. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you have a picture of that, like uh vaquero outfit that's leather uh, that, yes, yeah, that came from south america that one right there that's that's a wonderful thing that i'm so glad we bought because that's a very uh special adventurer type suit and she kept that picture below it because that explains you know uh the north the northern vaquero of Sa uh, south america wore those i don't know if that's vintage i don't know if she actually wore it maybe she did maybe she was out there traipsing around you know the Machu Picchu or something like that wearing that. I don't know. I mean, it's not exactly the style. Well, at least the way she was often portrayed, you know, most often from her, you know, official photos and things like that. But I don't know. I, maybe it's just me, but I, I could see her wearing that as long as the size was right. <laughs> it was. When we first saw it, we thought, this looks like a little kid's. And then we realized, well, she was like four foot ten. So it, it, I'm sure it was hers and it fit her perfectly. Absolutely here. So we got to take that next break right now. Again, we're uh, talking with Judd Burgess, owner of Brave Books, about the Natalicio collection. Uh, coming back, we'll talk a little bit more about, you know, some of those travel books, some of those things and what that kind of shows part of her early life here, as well as uh, uh, a lot more that we'll get to. We've got a lot of people tuning in with us this morning. Uh, Lisa Allen Plattner uh, commenting right now, of course. Uh, Barbara Given Bainey, BGB, saying hi to you as well there, Judd. Uh, I'm the administrator with, uh, remember, in El Paso. when. Hi there. Um, uh, Rosa Rodriguez, uh, Angie Salazar, tuning in from Colorado. Mark Al from just down the street here on Mesa Hills. Monica Cervantes from up in Las Cruces. People from all over here. Also, uh, Alameda, California, Mark Morales. And so a lot of people tuning in, chiming in. Appreciate you doing there over so on the social media. We got a note about uh, the audio quality over on the Facebook as well. This should be a little bit fixed now if you're tuning in that way. We also got a note that we'll talk more about after this break about uh, that uh, baseball player you were talking about, but we got to take that next break right now. So we'll be back with more from the El Paso History Radio Show here on News Radio 690 KTSM. 
Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the Old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan, near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. Do you have unfiled tax returns or owe the IRS or state more than $10,000? If you don't take action now, your tax problem is going to get worse, much worse. Seizure of property, bank levies, wage garnishments, and potential criminal prosecution. And if you owe the IRS back payroll taxes, chances are you will be visited at your home or business by an IRS agent. Don't become paralyzed by fear. Take action now. Call the experts at U.S. Tax Shield for help. Our team of experienced tax attorneys can get you protected, stop collections, and negotiate a permanent settlement with the IRS and state, potentially saving you thousands of dollars. At U.S. Tax Shield, our tax advisors will review your case for free, inform you of your rights, and give you a guaranteed quote. No games and no tricky upsells. That's why we have an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau and thousands of satisfied clients. Put an end to your torment. Get protected. Get the shield. Call U.S. Tax Shield now. 800-735-8360. That's 800-735-8360. 800-735-8360. The True Crime Podcast, What Happened to Sandy Beal, investigates the alarming death of a young woman who dreamed of a career in law enforcement. Journalist Melissa Jeltsin untangles the mystery at the heart of the investigation, revealing a troubling pattern by officials close to the case. I didn't take any of their crap because I could tell that they were hiding something. Listen to What Happened to Sandy Beal on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. Paid for by GovMint.com. Have you heard? The United States Mint has issued the Morgan Silver Dollar for the first time in 100 years. Not only that, but they are also minted in 99.9% .9 pure silver for the first time ever in history. Coin experts are calling this an amazing opportunity for anyone that knows the enduring popularity of Morgans. But you must hurry. Only 175,000 legal tender silver dollars were issued. These Morgan Silver Dollars are brand new, bright and shiny legal tender coins minted by the iconic Philadelphia Mint. Just call one 800 571 and you are guaranteed a new 99.9% .9 pure silver Morgan dollar. The first time in history this has happened. But with limited quantities, you must call now to order. To learn more, call 1-800-571-6468. If you order now, you will receive a free collector bonus, a $25 value free with every order. Call 1-800-571-6468 now to secure your new Morgan silver dollars before they are gone. That's 1-800-571-6468. Times of transition, whether from a sad event or a joyful one, can leave us feeling adrift. Social connections are an important part of a healthy life. Being isolated and lonely can be harmful to your health. It can lead to high blood pressure, a greater risk of heart disease, and early onset dementia. So it's important to build and maintain connections to people, not just in your family, but others whose relationships bring meaning to your life trying a new hobby, volunteering, exercising, even using your phone or other device to stay in touch with others. All these can be great ways to keep up your social connections and your physical and mental well-being. Visit connecttoeffect.org to see if you're at risk of social isolation and find ways to get connected. This message is brought to you by United Healthcare and AARP Foundation. Calling all jokesters, April Fools, and all around punny people. This week on the free iHeartRadio app, the joke's on you. No, literally, we're handing you the mic to tell us your favorite joke. Just open the free iHeart app and tap 24 7 Comedy Radio. When you're ready for the spotlight, tap the mic, record your joke, and send it. Then listen to hear yourself on 24 7 Comedy Radio all day today. Plus, we've got thousands of laugh out loud comedy podcasts for you to binge anytime, anywhere. <laughs> Stop laughing, that was serious. iHeartRadio. El Paso's News Radio 690 KTSM.
And now, let's turn back the pages of time and return to the El Paso History Radio Show. Brought to you by Patrick Tuttle, Colwell Banker Heritage Real Estate. 915-588-1850. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant, 6761 Donovan Drive. By M1 EP Management Corporation, 915-592-4549. By Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. With El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gift shopping. Here again, El Paso History with Andrew J. Polk. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk. A couple more things to talk to you about. Of course, we want to check out uh, some of the great people we've talked about on this program and kind of our partners in promotion of local history. Uh, Celebration of Our Mountains, celebrationofourmountains.org is the place to find them. Really, if you just search Celebration of Our Mountains, they're probably going to come up because it's a unique enough name here. And they have got a lot of hikes coming up here, as we have talked about recently. But also, if you weren't already able to do it, they did have the hike going on today, the Chihuahuan Desert Nature Park. But the next one that they've got up on our list here, uh, April 16th, useful plant series at the El Paso Archaeology Museum. And then Friday, April 22nd, Astronomy Night, Moon Gazing, and a Lyrian Meteor Shower. And then Sunday, May 1st, Dog Canyon slash Geology of the Tularosa Basin, another fascinating subject here. But again, you can find them over at celebrationsofourmountains.org. That's celebrationofourmountain.org. I may have put an extra S in there on celebrations, but it's just Singular celebration of our mountain.org. And of course, our friends over at Monterey Asset Management have changed their name to M1EP Management Corporation. So to find them, m1ep.com. That's M numeral one EP.com. If you're uh, tired of it, uh, the rat race of the stock market, investing in real estate can be another great alternative. So again, M1EP.com. So again, uh, joined here by uh, Judd Burgess in studio. And uh, thanks for the notes of the, all the there on the Facebook and social media, those saying that the audio is better. Do appreciate the feedback here. And hopefully there wasn't much feedback. But we were talking with Judd here about, again, the Natalicio collection. And you've got, again, really a spanning of a lifetime because... I mean, you, you would hope that someone that is in such a you know position of importance and relating to education in our area would, would have such a thing, but it's really kind of rare and fascinating, the specific works that you still have here, and including the one you got uh, right in front of you right there, right? Right. Would you like me to show this? Oh, one? absolutely. So, yeah, talk a little bit about that one and, and your, your perspective on it. This is a real treasure. Uh, it's a book that she more likely read as a child, probably maybe nine or 10 years old, judging from the long hand in it. It's called Understood Betsy. Got a chewed up dust cover. Just goes to show you how yeah. old it is. But hold, hold it up one more time here. Yeah, sure. So Understood Betsy, I mean, it seems uh, error appropriate just from the printing style even. So it's a pretty thick book, but, a, you know, a children's or a young adult. Book. Yeah, I believe she was probably maybe fifth, sixth grade. And it's got, you know, we put that embossing a stamp on it that you can see that just see it in that bottom right hand corner and also her own book yeah, plate in it there as well right there and so several books had a book plate of hers but this is just a great little book because it really gave us a window into what she thought like her thought patterns when she mm -hmm. was maybe 10 years old she wrote a little essay i, I call it a review because really that's what it is when you read it and i'll give you a couple of excerpts from it it mm -hmm. says here this it is a wonderful book. More people should get this book. It has a story which shares real life with uh, families and friends, relatives and neighbors. It also shows things that happen in everyday life and things that may happen to you and your friends, relatives and neighbors. So take my advice and read this book for a wonderful time. Sincerely, Diana Seedhoff. And so it was very special because it gives you a picture of her mindset, even as a 10 year old, nine year old, mm -hmm. whatever she was at that time, that she already had this mindset where she wants to teach people. She wants people to listen to her words because she feels they're important. This is a book you should read because A, B, C, and D. And so this is just kind of special. And this is why it's going to be part of our permanent collection because it shows that she was well on her way at 10 years of age to becoming an educator. Mm -hmm. and it, ultimately becoming a, a university president, one of the probably the longest tenured university president uh, for any one particular uh, university 
in history of America, from what I understand. Definitely the borderland. All I, I don't know the exhaustive history of every other major university that would keep track of such things, but I mean, it's uncontestable that here within our region that, yeah, that such a long tenure and then the impact it has. And again, we've got some clips that we're going to be uh, having from the last interview Dr. Dino Analicio did on this program back in 2019 in the next hour to get more to that impact and legacy here. But again, th just the collection of books, I really want to drive it home that there is going to be, you know, that kind of a thing. I mean, you're going to be holding on to that one, I'm sure. Absolutely, right. But yeah. there's still a lot of stuff that is that is available here, including a lot of her travel books you were telling me, right? Right, right. right. We have a, a, a nice collection of travel books and, and they're basically travel guides. Some of them are about the countries themselves and a lot of them are done in the language of the, the country like Brazil, Portugal, because she, I mean, she learned those languages, so she bought them in those languages as well. But there, it's just a fascinating history when you go over the travel guides because it, it really kind of shows mm -hmm. the various different places across the world where she uh, traveled to. Uh, one interesting anecdote is when we had our sale, uh, we had this woman, uh, she came up to me and she says, you know, I want to buy this book. And it was uh, Cambodia. It was a mm -hmm. travel guide to Cambodia. And I said, but look what I found inside it. And she opens it. And she brings out this photo ID card of Dr. Natalicio that she, you know, was given as part of some tour and, and you know, mm -hmm. her hotel and everything. And it's fascinating because it, it goes to show it had her, her face on it with her dark sunglasses, you know. And, and it, I, you know, she wanted me to know because she felt it was a very valuable thing. But I said, you know what? You found that in that book. It's yours enjoy it it's very special yeah and so it was really neat because i hadn't seen anything like that in the entire collection that where she inserted something like that i mean we found several things that she inserted into books but in that particular case it was an id card and so that's a little piece of her history there it just showed that you know she was off in cambodia enjoying the country with that one little pass that she had yeah, and her travel history, because I mean, a lot of people in the modern sense, in the recent times, or those who were around and aware of her during her tenure as UTEP president might think of her as kind of a, well, a homebody. But I mean, that's a, a little unfair even to say it that way, that she stuck around El Paso, even if she was still traveling. But that, I mean, you're here for three decades after arriving. You, you, El Paso seems to like that and then think that people will then stick around here. But she had quite the travel career ahead of that. And even, you know, during that traveling around the area, you know, going down and talking with partner institutions, you know, and people um, down in. Um, <laughs> geez, weird comments coming in over on social media, but um, some of the uh, just the travel experiences she had. And again, the travel books can really help show them off when it comes to just the experiences she had and even just, you know, part of her core nature, including that, you know, that Portuguese book you were talking about. Right. Because to my understanding, the, the last name Natalicio was actually a Portuguese by way of Brazil in yeah. origin. And I believe she met her husband in Portugal. When she went down there uh, for education, she met Dr. Na uh, I mean, her, Natalicio, her husband, uh, her ex-husband, who that was his name. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't doubt that. One of the interesting things, too, is we have a book, uh, on a safari to tanzania and she spent time in africa she'd go on these safaris and this is one of those books that you produce through shutterbug or something like that that they're kind mm -hmm. of homemade and so somebody that went with her produced this book that had photographs of this group of people and she was part of this group that went to tanzania and you can see their little you know off-road vehicles and there are several pictures of elephants and various different animals out there on on the safari planes so that's kind of a nice personal book that somebody gave to her and ascribed it to her. But that also gives you a, a little window into her uh, adventures, shall we say. So again, just for the collection itself and the way you're dealing with it, again, some things are going to be kept around. But how much would you say is still available if people you know, want to you know, get their own piece of it, pick up a, a book or so here? As people have been able to do, we popped up a couple of pictures of uh, some of the books on the shelves here that show just kind of the diversity thing. I want to say you had mentioned uh, Chomsky. I can't quite see We're where that one. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but just I mean, this is just the, the diversity of all of what is coming in through some of this here. So, I mean, and people have been able to come by and, you know, take advantage of some right. of it here. You got some of the pictures again over from your Instagram. If people want to see uh, people you know, coming by and looking at some of the works, including some of the artwork as part of it here. So how much would you say is still available for, for people to buy? We, we had a two day event, two 10 hour days. It was a Saturday and Sunday and we sold about 140 of her books and we still have maybe 
close to 300, 240, 250 to 300 books still available. They'll be up for another two to three weeks. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, box them and then just keep them, you know, aside for our next year's event. So uh, if you're at Brave Books, 1307 Arizona, within the next two, three weeks, you still have access to all of that. I'll be happy to show you a lot of the permanent collection. I always love, you know, showing books off to the mm -hmm. people that come and uh, letting handle them and everything. But yes, yeah, we, we still have plenty for, for you to look at. You mentioned Noam Chomsky. Mm -hmm. He was a, a god to her because he was one of the fathers, you know, one of the original people that really understood language. And so we have this book that she uh, had, and she signed it in 1965 or something, and it was called Syntax and Structures by Noam Chomsky. And then we have another book that she had in 2003 that was signed personally to her by the same Noam Chomsky. So wow. that that shows this you know this gap of time between the 1960s how she learned from this man to the 2003 where she actually had him personally sign it to her the same person that she was studying and reading. So you see all these connections you know building through her books and that that's kind of an exciting little thing. So those are the things that we want to share with people. You know, just kind of this this pattern in her educational life and her adventurous life and her personal life. Yeah, absolutely. Again, because there may be a lot of common conception about the figure of Dr. Natalisi, but of course she was a living, breathing human being who had a lot of her own experiences. And the way that this it shows up a different side of her that, again, maybe fills in some, some gaps, maybe reinforces some ideas that were had about her, but just shows her interest and how it, eventually she you know, ended up affecting this whole region and, and the trajectory it set her on. That's the real fascinating part for me, like you were showing with that uh, more, you know, children's, you know, young adult novel, how, I mean, you can even sense from that point the way, uh, I mean, it may seem like, oh, there's this arc of history she was clearly on, but I mean, clearly there was some, you know, early tendencies that were reflected there. Exactly, exactly. So there's a lot more to talk about here. Uh, again, we got people chiming in over with us on uh, social media, including uh, some people chiming in over on the YouTube. Question about how comments show up. If you're commenting on one page, we can pop them up on the main one here, but uh, otherwise they stay where you comment here. But uh, Daniel uh, Lehman uh, over from Tucson saying hi um, and more, letting us know the audio is good. Do appreciate that. And uh, also, if you're uh, basically being a, a troll on the page, know that we will deal with that in due course here. But uh, otherwise, we're talking about, again, the Natalizio Collection, Judd Burgess, owner of Brave Books here, to talk about uh, the collection, the exhibition, how it's going to continue on forward here, giving a lot of good detail here. And we got to come back and talk more about that. And again, we'll be getting into second hour of some clips from Dr. Natalizio herself here from the last time she was interviewed on this program. So we got to take that next break right now. We'll be back with more on the El Paso History Radio Show here on News Radio 690 KTSM. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call 915-592-4549. 915 915-592-4549. The El Paso History Show with Andrew J. Polk is 10 a.m. this Saturday about San Elizario and El Camino Real de Tierra Adentro that runs through El Paso. The El Paso History Show is sponsored by Patrick Tuttle, Colwell Banker Heritage Real Estate, Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant in Canyon Tio, Mission Del Rey Southwest for gifts and decor, and by M1 EP Management Corporation, Saturday morning at 10 a.m. on News Radio 690 and streaming live on Facebook and YouTube. Talk El Paso, weekdays at 4 on News Radio 690 KTSM, breaking down the impact of the news on the borderland and beyond. Brought to you in part by Mission Del Rey Southwest, souvenirs, gifts, and decor. That's Talk El Paso, Monday through Friday, 4 to 6 p.m., right here on News Radio 690 KTSM. The Tipping Point with Mike Tipton is coming back home to Fox Sports 1380 and iHeart Media Radio Station and the iHeart Radio app every Friday from 5 to 6 p.m. starting January 7th. Do you love sports, food, El Paso culture? Then this is the show for you. I'm Mike Tipton, and I'm inviting you to tune in to The Tipping Point with Mike Tipton on Fox Sports 1380, covering local, statewide, and national sports stories, news, and information that you want to talk about. The Tipping Point with Mike Tipton, Friday afternoons at 5 p.m. on Fox Sports 1380 and the iHeart Radio app. Hey, spring is here, and the warmer weather means you've got a lot more going on. Don't let COVID get in the way of any of it. COVID vaccines offer the strongest possible protection now and from long-term side effects in the future. 
Protect yourself and your plans. We can do this. Find vaccines near you at vaccines.gov. That's vaccines.gov. Paid for by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Wendy's knows a better breakfast starts with a better biscuit. That's why you can get a hot and buttery Wendy's breakfast biscuit with bacon or sausage, fresh cracked egg and cheese for just $1. Get your Wendy's Buck Biscuit sandwich today. Limited time only at participating U.S. Wendy's. I can't believe you found them. He seems sorry. We very clearly told him not to look up there. I'm honestly impressed that he was able to do it. Right? But did he balance on that big chair? Or... Yeah, I mean, I guess he'll just know what his gifts are this year. I really thought we had hidden them well. If they can find their presence, they can find a gun. 911, what is your emergency? Every day, eight kids and teens are unintentionally killed or injured by loaded and unlocked guns. Learn how to make your home safer at nfamilyfire.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and Family Fire. News Radio 690 KTSM. And now, let's turn back the pages of time and return to the El Paso History Radio Show. Brought to you by Patrick Tuttle, Colwell Banker Heritage Real Estate. 915-588-1850. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant, 6761 Donovan Drive. By M1 EP Management Corporation, 915-592-4549. By Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. With El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gift shopping. Here again, El Paso History with Andrew J. Polk. Thank you all so very much for tuning in here for the El Paso History Radio Show. I'm live here on News Radio 690 KTSM. I'm your host, Andrew J. Polk. A couple more things to tell you about. Rick Kern's music podcast, Talk and Rock Radio, talking about uh, some of the music history of the borderland and Southwest in general, but a bit beyond. He talks with some interesting figures. You may uh, know Rick from his time having done the uh, Border Legends Tour and just being involved in the music scene in El Paso for years as it is. So he talks about some of those aspects. So you can find them at talkandrockradio.com talkandrockradio.com and of course uh, more of our sponsors here you can call 915-588-1850 for patrick tuttle coldwell banker heritage real estate patrick is an excellent realtor to go to for el paso homes for sale or rent again you can call him it'll ring right there with him 588-1850 915-588-1850 so still joined here in studio by judd burgess owner of brave books and again the name i'm appelling on to this the steward of the Natalicio collection, the outcome of the estate of the uh, late Dr. Diana, Diana Natalicio, and of course the longtime uh, UTEP president and all that came along with that here. And we actually got a comment in, um, uh, we had a question uh, early on in the show about, uh, you had mentioned that there was a baseball uh, baseball notable from St. Louis that uh, had been part of Natalicio's history, right? Right. And I think we got the note that that was, uh, uh, the theory is uh, Stan Musial was right. the person involved here, which is actually, I think, a name that I have heard as much as I am not an expert on baseball or baseball history. I'm sure he's the most famous St. Louis Cardinal. Uh, no, uh, Did I get that right? St. Louis Cardinal? Was that the football team? St. Louis? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, Stan the <laughs> Man Musial. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. And he's the one that gave her her love for baseball because she babysat his kids. How about that? So, again, if we got that right here, uh, let us know. But if you want to comment over there uh, on the social media, that's a good way you can do so throughout the program. we got a lot of people uh, expressing their appreciation uh, for the subject and just letting us know where they're tuning in. We always appreciate knowing where that's coming from here. And we'll be getting into it a little bit more here because there's more to talk about, more to get into, and more clips that we're actually going to be getting into from Dr. Natalicio from her last appearance on this program in the next hour, starting off with that history moment here. So uh, that's going to start uh, taking us into this next break here. So again, we're going to be sticking around with Judd Burgess talking more about some of the collections and how they fill in the gaps in some of these major parts of the history and essentially the transformation we saw of the University of Texas at El Paso under the leadership of Dr. Natalie. So again, we got some of the clips of both how she arrived in town, how she considered it. And then again, the impact she had on the community can be shown through the books and other things. I mean, these uh, inscriptions that come along with them don't just come out because uh, someone's just really, really nice. I don't, I don't feel like, I mean, you hopefully they're nice as well, but sometimes you got to get stuff done. Right. Absolutely. Here. So uh, we're going to be taking that as next the break right now. Back from and back after a bit. And mask mandates are lifted. Your business needs a lift too. promote your company right here, right now. Radio ads connect with 93% of Americans every week. That's more than Google, more than Facebook, more than TV. In fact, radio reaches 20% more millennials than TV. 
Want more of the people you want to talk to all in one place? Visit iHeartAdvertising.com and get AM and FM working for you. That's iHeartAdvertising.com. Thank you for listening to the El Paso History Radio Show. There's another hour to go, so please stay tuned. This hour is brought to you by Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant, home of the Juan and only Margarita. By Patrick Tuttle, Colwell Banker Heritage Real Estate, 915-588-1850. By M1 EP Management Corporation, 915-592-4549. By Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino with El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gift shopping. We'll be right back after the news, right here on News Radio 690, KTSM, El Paso. Mike Kappel here, serial entrepreneur with words from another happy payroll customer. What do I love about Patriot Payroll Services? What don't I love about Patriot Payroll Services? It's easy to learn, it's very user-friendly, it's fast, even for a first-time user. It's perfect for our business. It's affordable, and it's been a great experience so far. We have no plans of changing. Oh, 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 oh. Easy to learn, easy to use. Small business software tailored just for you. Oh, 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 oh. Visit us at patriotsoftware.com. Use promo code RADIO and get two months of payroll free. That's PatriotSoftware.com. With PatriotSoftware.com, accounting and payroll, keep your time and money. Sun City Craft Beer Fest, powered by iHeartMedia, returns to downtown El Paso at the Convention Center Plaza on Saturday, May 21st and Sunday, May 22nd. Check out over 170 craft beers from the best local and national breweries, plus live music, food trucks, a giant game zone, Sunday fun day specials, and more. Tickets include 10 samples of the beer or cider of your choice and a collectible beer glass. Get hosted beers and a free meal in the VIP lounge. Tickets and info at suncitycraftbeerfest.com. NBC News Radio, I'm Julie Ryan. The president of Ukraine is pleading with the U.S. for more planes and missiles. Volodymyr Zelensky said President Biden should not bother sending helmets to fight the Russian invasion, but should instead send more missiles and planes. The Ukrainian city of Mariupol says it'll take at least $10 billion to repair the damage caused by Russian attacks on the city. Here's Lisa Taylor. The mayor told the city council Friday that war criminals must be punished for all damage and human suffering. He added that the city is working to obtain reparations from Russia. I'm Lisa Taylor. President Biden and the First Lady are taking part in today's commissioning ceremony for the USS Delaware in the port of Wilmington. The Navy's Virginia class attack submarine arrived at the port earlier this week. The $1.8 billion nuclear powered submarine is used in anti submarine warfare and intelligence gathering. The Delaware is formally being commissioned after a two year delay due to the pandemic. The House has approved a bill to legalize marijuana at the federal level. Most states have already taken such steps, either for medicinal or recreational purposes. The bill would remove pot from the federal list of scheduled controlled substances and force courts to clear any related convictions. The Democratic measure now faces an uncertain future in the 50-50 Senate. The Motion Picture Academy has accepted Will Smith's resignation after he slapped Chris Rock at the Oscars. Academy President David Rubin says despite Smith's resignation, they're still moving forward with disciplinary proceedings against Smith for violations of the Academy's standards of conduct. In his resignation, Smith said, The list of those I have hurt is long and includes Chris, his family, many of my dear friends and loved ones, all those in attendance, and global audiences at home. The 64th Grammy Awards are tomorrow night, and the show will open with a live performance by Silk Sonic. Other performers will include BTS, Billie Eilish, and Chris Stapleton. 
You're listening to the latest on NBC News Radio. From the KFOX 14 Severe Weather Center, this is Chief Meteorologist Sandra Diaz. A warmer weekend ahead of us as temperatures return to the lower to mid 80s. Folks, the average this time of the year is 77, so we're definitely running much warmer. But the other increase that will begin on Sunday will begin the wind, and they will strengthen as we kick off next week. We all hear the radio ads about the IRS. They tell you to be afraid, to be scared, and they try to frighten you into calling. But I'm not here to do that. Tax Relief Advocates is different. TRA is here to tell you that if you owe money to the IRS, whether it's $5,000, $50,000, or $500,000, we have a solution. It doesn't matter if you're sitting in your car at work or with your kids. No matter where you are, call now, 800-510-2204. Don't lose hope. TRA can eliminate or reduce what you owe to the IRS, and there is zero risk to you. If we can't reduce your tax debt, then you pay nothing. Our passion is taxes and helping individuals fix their IRS problems. We have a five-star rating on Google and Yelp and an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. Tax Relief Advocates, real solutions for real people. You don't need to be afraid of the IRS any longer. End your tax nightmare today and call 800-510-2204. Again, that's 800-510-2204. Or you can visit us online at tra.com. The podcast, What's Your Problem? dives deep into new technology and the challenges facing people at the top of their field. On each episode, Jacob Goldstein, former co-host of NPR's Planet Money, speaks with the entrepreneurs and engineers creating innovations in medicine, artificial intelligence, and more. We didn't have a particular technology. We didn't have a business model. We didn't have a way of making money. It was a great way to start a company. (laughs) I highly recommend it. Listen to What's Your Problem on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. Your local radio stations are here for you. No subscriptions or monthly fees necessary. We're here to give you the news, weather, and traffic you need and the music you love. But if the foreign-owned record labels get their way, it could stop the music. They want Congress to force radio stations to pay them more money simply to play their music. Don't let radio go silent. Text LOCAL to 52886 and tell Congress to protect local radio stations. This message furnished by the National Association of Broadcasters. Egg excited for Easter? Boxed is too. Get your bulk size candy, chocolate, and more delivered with no membership fees. And hop over to iHeart.com slash boxed and enter to win $1,500. Save 20% plus free shipping on your first order with code bulk save at boxed. The better way to shop bulk. If you see something, why do you say something? I see safe for my friends. For my community. For everyone here. We all have something worth protecting. A why that unifies us. Report suspicious activity to local authorities. If you see something, say something. News Radio 690 KTSM El Paso. News Radio 690 KTSM presents the second hour of the El Paso History Radio Show with your host, Andrew J. Polk, streaming live at ktsmradio.com. Brought to you by Patrick Tuttle Colwell Banker Heritage Real Estate, 915-588-1850. By Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant, home of the Juan and only Margarita. By M1 EP Management Corporation, 915-592-4549. By Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino, for El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gift shopping. And now, El Paso History, with your host, Andrew J. Polk. Thank you so very much for tuning in for the El Paso History Radio Show. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk. We're continuing on to talk with our guest here for this show, Judd Burgess of Brave Books. But to start off Hour 2 here, we do have a history moment uh, from El Paso documentary filmmaker Jackson Polk from the last appearance of Dr. Natalicio on this program and talking about how she arrived here in El Paso. I interviewed Dr. Natalicio for the El Paso History Radio Show in 2019 just after she retired as president of the University of Texas at El Paso. She talks here about the 1966 Texas Western College men's basketball team that won the NCAA championship and what came after. You were there when it was TWC? You weren't there. It was no. a different. It already changed. So you came in. Uh... So it changed in 1967, right after we won the National Basketball the biggie, Championship. Yeah. <laughs> in a in a marketing uh, strategy that no one will ever understand. You win the national championship <laughs> at Texas name. Western. Yeah. Immediately mask your accomplishment. And I came in 71. 
but the thing is, when by the, just to mention that movie, when it did hit the fan, you made a big deal out of it. Well, it was a big deal. It, it was, was yes. huge. Oh, no. And that, that championship is still to this day. I mean, we're the only school in Texas that's won the National Basketball Championship. And, I mean, you know, they're in the Hall of Fame. And I went with a couple of the players, David Latine and Willie Worsley, to Harvard. And we got recognition there for the Glory Road story. Um, it's a very big deal because that game really changed the face of, of men's basketball. Oh, it did. Since that 2019 interview, Baylor became the second Texas school to be NCAA champs. But Texas Western will always be first. I'm Jackson Polk with this history moment for the El Paso History Radio Show. And we're going to be playing a little bit more from Dr. Natalicio again from that interview series, talking more about the history and impact on our region throughout this hour of the show here. But a couple more things to note here. A uh, mention of our great partner in El Paso history and talking about it and promoting it in our region. Of course, Barbara Given Bainey, operator of the re- group Remember in El Paso, when over on Facebook, which has uh, 33,000 members as of last check here. So it's a sizable group and pretty well administered given how weird things can get online sometimes. They have archive pictures galore along a lot of these topics that we discuss on this program. But just remember, the administrators have worked hard in researching for photos with our history attached. When others use the photos, they ask that credit be given to their site. So again, the chief admin and owner and historian, Barbara Given Bainey, also known affectionately as a BGB, of course, along with admins, Rick Duncan, Rick Nahara, Margaret D. Smith, historian, Paul Louie, and moderators Ben Vincent and Ken Weiss. We appreciate their efforts and, again, uh, love working with them and the uh, ability to promote El Paso history in all the ways that, well, is required to do so here. So we are, again, uh, joined here in studio by Judd Burgess, owner of Brave Books. And we've been talking about the Natalicio collection and how that came about and really what it shows here, because I mean, we're talking a lot about the history and really the accomplishments of what Dr. Natalicio did in town. But again, the, the human aspect, the humanizing aspect that comes with a collection like this. I mean, just the, the little aspects that shows of interest. Like I would have never known before you brought it up about the baseball interest here and the, uh, the musial connection, I guess we should say. Right. That, that was something I wasn't aware of either. Uh, but it became, you know, uh, the estate sale director, her name is Cindy Liu, and, and she had introduced me to that baseball collection. She said, she, because you know, she knows a lot about people as well. She, she's had connect. She knew her uh, ex-husband as well, uh, Natalicio. And so that whole baseball thing, I just kind of looked at it and I, you know, we don't sell sports books at the bookstore, but her baseball books did sell because people wanted to, you know, collect that aspect of her mm-hmm. passion. And uh, I talked to uh, another baseball fanatic, uh, and and he's got a huge collection, by the way. I think his name is Fernie, and Grado, I believe. And he's very good friends with her. And he told me that she, whenever they went to a baseball game, she would like document every little really? thing that happened during the game, but in a very scientific way. It's something only a baseball nerd would understand. I mean, I couldn't understand. It. We're, we're talking like box scores and things like that, oh, like I that mean, kind just, of study. Okay, she would dissect that game. Which is, I will be again perfectly honest. I mean, I, I like baseball, been out, you know, Chihuahuas games and, uh, you know, uh, Diablos before that. But I was mostly like, well, did they hit it or not? I was not at that level of knowledge to understand right. exactly, you know, uh, you know, what's their batting average? Is 300 good? And not understanding that that's and, and damn perfect. Of, of baseball, I, one of the things that we collected was her invitation to the first inaugural game of the Chihuahuas and her ticket stub. Really? We, I framed it and I have it hanging there, you know along with several other things, just because that's that's something that was important to her, to, to keep that first ticket stub to El Paso's Chihuahua's original game. I mean, I always assume that, uh, given the support for the team in town, that there's more people supporting it, but I, I just always, it, it makes me happy to know that Darren Hunt is in good company here in town mm-hmm. with uh, loving baseball here. But uh, speaking specifically about that sports history and really with the, the 1966 team, you got one of the books here that is still on exhibition here, and again, uh, also by a local author here, um, Rick Sanchez, uh, that is the I, ba- yeah, base- Ray Sanchez. Yeah. Ray Sanchez, mm-hmm. sorry, yeah. Uh, base basketball's biggest upset about the team and of course the inscription that you have on the inside of it here we got up on screen and again if you're wondering about these pictures if you're listening in radio land we got these over on our facebook page we'll describe what we're talking about here to you but if you want to see the full thing the whole multimedia thing we do it's over on our social media facebook youtube twitter and twitch is where we're up on these days you can also leave your comments over there appreciate those who do such as uh barbara given bainey uh 
of course, going to give the shout out there. But uh, yeah, the inscription there given to uh, by Ray Sanchez to Dr. Natalicio. I mean, that personalization of it is is just fascinating and something that you rarely get to see in this kind of fashion here. So uh, what he said there is um, uh, just about uh, to to Diane, a very personal inscription there. Right, right. And, you know, Ray Sanchez recently passed away himself. That's true. And uh, he's another figure in El Paso that was beloved. He he was a sports uh, writer. He wrote several books regarding sports in El Paso. And mm-hmm. so that that's what I love is this overlap of people that are beloved in El Paso within the same book. And that's why we're keeping those particular books because it, it, it just shows that camaraderie that they had over the years that they built up that goodwill. Yeah, and what he wrote in there with uh, with admiration and uh, much cariño right. is what he said in there. So, I mean, again, it, really besides the interest that this shows it also shows the impact and connections within the community that it's hard to get in with almost any other account or recounting of the life of such a person here i mean it's almost it's not quite as personal as reading someone's diary but this, it feels kind of close it does it does it feels kind of like i'm a voyeur or something <laughs> you know but a, a good kind of voyeur like i mean you yeah, getting just a deeper insight into the history of such an impactful person here so we were talking a little bit in the last hour about some of the travel books here and again uh, in the last time that we had dr natalicio on the show uh right after her retirement actually within a, a few weeks of it uh, at that point uh, she was talking a lot about her early travels and how uh, the road that led her to utep essentially here and so talk a little bit more about uh, some of those books you were talking about some of the ones that she had been in places and traveled here how much of that would you still say you have on hand roughly if you had to guesstimate well as far as like uh books that uh where she spent time in south america we have several of those we have uh several books that have maps within them uh lisbon you know uh mm-hmm. vintage maps you know from the 50s you know that have pull out maps we have uh books where she actually wrote little notations i have a book that's got a um a little like thumbnail drawing she did of a church a layout of a church and i'm i'm certain it was her that did it wow. where she like points out the vestibules so she was very fascinated with this particular church uh there's just a lot of great stuff there's another book that she was a big opera fan mm-hmm. um and, and andrew and and so she has this really? book okay. and i like to show it off i was showing it off quite a bit during our, our event and it's a thick book and when i started going through it i noticed she started inserting opera brochure so what she did was she used this book as a little history of her attendances and her thoughts on particular operas so there's there's uh brochures of various operas she's been to and she took them into right where it was talked about in the book and then there's these little notes that she wrote to herself like la traviata was really good i I enjoyed the music the ballet was fantastic you know just various different things Mm -hmm. and so it just shows this this uh love of opera as well and so there's probably about maybe 15 different little pieces of paper and brochures really? within this book. Wow. And beyond even any of these specific subjects, kind of shows off, again, a little bit more about the character of Dr. Natalicio. I mean, that that her fastidious nature, because yeah. I mean, it's one thing to have a collection of books. I mean, I've had one since childhood that has been in boxes and things, but to keep it up and to keep such detailed things within it. I mean, over I mean half a century. You're talking about some of these books from like from the '60s or maybe even earlier. To keep all of that going over all the places that she was, been the experiences she had. I mean, that that is very telling as well. I mean, do, do you agree? What are your thoughts I on that? Agree. I, I just it it establishes a timeline of her life and where she lived, uh, the her time in South America. And so you're able to piece together various different things about her life. One of the oldest books, we, well, the oldest book that we have is called Bowtie Bunny. And it's this really mm-hmm. fascinating children's book. Uh, it's just kind of beat up and everything. It's got a real bow tie in it. And every time you flip open a page, it's got that same bow tie because it's kind of, it has a die cut. Okay. And so it's, I mean, she, you know, we all kind of keep that oldest teddy bear or mm-hmm. the oldest book that we read, you know, mom on pop or whatever it happens to be. But that was her book. I'm almost certain of it. I mean, there's no no signature on it or anything, but for some reason, it was in her library. So I'm just assuming this is the oldest book that she kept, and she kept it because it had a lot of personal relevance and it brought back a lot of nostalgia for her. Yeah, and again, just the keeping of up and up of all of that, 
is uh, no small feat because of all the places she was and had been. Again, there's some of the fascinating stories coming out from her, again, the last time she was on the program that we'll get into here in a little bit, but also the impact that she had on the region because all of this, I mean, it's a woven tapestry of life. And again, this is just not a perspective you usually get on people. So again, joining us here in studio is Judd Burgess, owner of Bray Books. Tell them a little bit about the store if they want to come and see this and, and then again, how you're going to be exhibiting it going forward. Sure. First, I'd like to give a shout out to my wife, Lori. She is co-owner, <laughs> even though I do like 98% of it right now because she's about to retire. And so she's going to have a much more uh, uh, you know, impact on it. But she's come up with some of the most fabulous ideas for our books are as well. So uh, we're located on 1307 Arizona. We're open seven days a week from noon to five. We're getting ready to start opening in evenings uh, because we have a, lar- a huge young crowd that is really embracing paper books you know just mm-hmm. like a lot of them have returned to vinyl or oh, have yeah. discovered vinyl they've discovered sitcoms from the 70s and 80s and they're just kind of discovering that there's a world outside of their generation that's worth looking at so uh, they're we're, we're basically catering a lot of our instagram toward young people they're in the same age group of our four kids all in their 20s and 30 and one okay. in 30 so we're, we're excited we're excited to see el paso getting excited about uh, our bookstore and our bookstore is more than just a bookstore. Our, our mission basically is to uh, encourage personal growth, creative development, civic participation, and, of course, literacy. El Paso is on the bottom five cities every year for literacy mm. for so many reasons, being on the border, language issues, a lot of different things. There's only three local bookstores. you got Bill Clark with Literarity, and I believe mm. there's one called Cactus Flower on Donovan. And then you have Barnes and Noble. And for a city our size, it's just no excuse. So we're hoping to make an impact and eventually maybe even expand. You know, we've got the books for it, but uh, it's just finding the right properties and the right prices for rent and everything. So. And just a note on your location, there it is. We don't have a good street view because you got these two giant uh, bushy trees in front of it here, but we do have the picture up over on uh, Facebook right now of uh, one of your front rooms there, it looks right. like, right? That's like, that's a very old picture. That's what we first opened about three years ago. And it is a lot more crowded. There's a lot more art. (laughs) That's my brother, Roy, and my mom, Graciela there. (laughs) They were my, the quickest models I could find for our original bookmark. So yeah, that's, that's what we, it's just, it's a fabulous place because it's a historic building on Rio Grande Street. It was built in 1915. And Laurie and I, uh, we bought it originally for my graphic design business. And so we ended, we ended up paying it off and, and converting it to a bookstore. So the whole building is bookstore. We even have a bookstore cat named Yofi who lives there and uh, basically keeps the poltergeist at bay. <laughs> okay, but so, I mean, that, that the store itself is an interesting bit on its own right here. But we tell you what, we got to take that next break right now. Coming back, we'll hear more from Dr. Natalicio, more about you know her arrival in town and some of the first things that she was doing here. And again, weaving more in the stories of Ben, what the books show around that here. So we're going to talk more about that here on the El Paso History Radio Show. Uh, stay tuned here on News Radio 690 KTSM. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to YouTube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan, near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. The job market is competitive right now, so you need to be competitive to attract top talent. If you're trying to fill open positions at your business, iHeartMedia is here to help. Use radio and digital targeting to find fresh, passive candidates currently in the workforce. These candidates are listening right now, looking for new opportunities. Together, we can let the community know you're hiring. Visit iHeartAdvertising.com. That's iHeartAdvertising.com. 
Sun City Craft Beer Fest, powered by iHeartMedia, returns to downtown El Paso at the Convention Center Plaza on Saturday, May 21st and Sunday, May 22nd. Check out over 170 craft beers from the best local and national breweries. Plus, live music, food trucks, a giant game zone, Sunday fun day specials, and more. Tickets include 10 samples of the beer or cider of your choice and a collectible beer glass. Get hosted beers and a free meal in the VIP lounge. Tickets and info at suncitycraftbeerfest.com. Talk El Paso weekdays at 4 on News Radio 690 KPSM, breaking down the impact of the news on the borderland and beyond. Brought to you in part by Mission Del Rey Southwest, souvenirs, gifts, and decor. That's Talk El Paso Monday through Friday, 4 to 6 p.m., right here on News Radio 690 KPSM. So the dream was to build your very own law practice, be your own boss, call all the shots. But have things like billing, HR, timekeeping, and all the other management stuff turned your dream into a nightmare? Take charge of your practice with Lexicon. We're the intersection of practice management software and legal support services for your firm. You'll get more billable and livable hours back. Lexicon marks the spot for all your practice management needs. Visit lexiconservices.com slash intersection to get the whole story or schedule a demo. Bear, the rescue dog had very flaky skin, dropping a lot of fur. And Levette wanted to do steroid injections. I was at a dead end. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Probably six weeks after we started using Dynavite, no more flaky skin. He doesn't scratch and itch. It was awesome. You get some Dynavite, how happy your dog will be. Every rescue dog in America deserves Dynavite for 90 days. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. I am incredibly, incredibly proud to be a physician here at St. Jude. To be in a place where I know my patients are going to get the top-notch care. Not only care, but also research happening 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Every single person that contributes is a part of that St. Jude family that makes that happen. Because of everyone that is really committed to the mission of St. Jude, we're giving families hope. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Finding cures. Saving children. Learn more at stjude.org. Teens in foster care will love you, even if you don't know the lingo. Dad bod. Now, the result of the occasional donut always washed down with confidence. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt U.S. Kids, and the Ad Council. Visit AdoptUSKids.org. El Paso's News Radio, 690 KTSM. And now, let's turn back the pages of time and return to the El Paso History Radio Show. Brought to you by Patrick Tuttle, Colwell Banker Heritage Real Estate. 915-588-1850. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant, 6761 Donovan Drive. By M1 EP Management Corporation, 915-592-4549. By Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. With El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gift shopping. Here again, El Paso History with Andrew J. Polk. You are tuned in here to the El Paso History Radio Show. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk. Thank you for tuning in, however you may be doing so, because a lot of ways that we have our show out there on social media and such here. And, of course, coming in here next week, we're going to be talking with Al Borrego, uh, president of the Cultural Heritage Society of the Camino Real de Tierra Adentro, talking about their upcoming history symposium and all the details going into it, uh, titled uh, April 1598, the birth of the American Southwest, or something very similar to that. I don't have it written down totally correctly here, but they're talking about many of the aspects of the culture, the heritage, the continuing impacts that we can see from that route and the way it has shaped our history here. And again, even that's the modern scale and all that comes with it. So that'll be coming in here next week on the program. So stay tuned for that here. Um, as also, well, one more sponsor we need to mention and remind you about Mission Del Rey Southwest. It's a great place to go to. So if you've never been out to their storefront, it's uh, uh, out there on uh, Lee Trevino, their 12,000 square foot showroom. And they have got just so much variety of things, both emblematic of the area, things many people might expect to find, but also locally sourced products and even food items. So if you really want to bring people from out of town or send gifts to people from out of town it's a great place to do so or add a little bit you know of the local flavor and culture from our area to even your own home decor great uh selection of souvenirs jewelry gifts and decor so if you think you're looking for something and any of that sounds like it might be useful to you you definitely need to go and find them you can give them a call at 915-440-2140 or missiondelray.com that's missiondelray.com 
dot com here so again joined here in studio by uh, judd burgess uh, owner of brave books or co-owner i guess might be the right way to say don't want to get you in trouble by any means no. here uh because you do have your partners in doing so and again talking about the natalicio collection that you all put together out of the estate of dr diana natalicio after her passing and after her uh, long career as the president of the university of texas at el paso so we actually have a clip here again from the interview that she was uh doing on our air here back in 2019, uh, not too long after she ended up, well, retiring from the position here. Uh, so we have one more clip that we're going to play here uh, right now from that uh, of uh, some of her first priorities when she became the president of, again, the university. When I first became president, one of the things that I felt was extremely important was to understand UTEP's public role in this region. What were we supposed to be doing? Well, we public universities are supposed supposed to serve the public in the region in which they're located. I mean, that's what you do. Right. And so uh, we began to look at that, and we looked at the demographics of our student population, which did not align with the demographics of the region. We didn't have very many Hispanic students at that time, and the majority of people in this region were Hispanic. And so the question then became, why aren't we enrolling more Hispanics? Because I believe, and I think most people believe, that talent is spread all over uh, the population and doesn't have any boundaries of gender or ethnicity or anything. People are talented, or they're not. Uh, but most people have talents of some kind or other. And so then the question was, how do we ensure that talented young people have an opportunity to pursue a higher education degree. And that was all about access. And how do we create that access? And the first thing that we tried to do was reach out to our education partners because it was clear that we draw 80% of our students from El Paso County. That means El Paso County school districts, the community college and the university, all educating the same group cohort of students. So in order for us to be successful, we needed to have partners in pre-K through 12 and at the community college who shared our vision and our, our mission to ensure that talented young people had an opportunity. When you got there, that wasn't the case? It wasn't set up in that fashion? It wasn't, sadly. It oh. was, it, um, you know, there are some uh, historical documents that suggest that there was a move actually to build more dormitories and to try to get more students from other parts of the country. And um, I believe President Ray was very much in favor of that. Um, the only problem with that is that um, we were not educating the people in the region. And as a public university, we should. Again, that was uh, Dr. Natalisio speaking on this program back in 2019, uh, speaking there with uh, Jackson Pole Coast, of course, at the time. And so just that concept is is almost baffling, the idea that uh, UTEP wasn't focused on the community here because, I mean, my... I'm, I'm willing to say my entire lifetime, or at least the time when I was conscious enough to be aware of UTIP as an institution, that was always a facet of it, a very important aspect of it here. So again, that's some of the, the public history that comes along with this here and the transformation that can then be seen the way UTEP works as a very community-focused institution today. But again, we're talking about the impact and legacy of Dr. Natalicio and the way that she kind of took it through here. So I think that's a very important thing to point out. And again, the gaps that then this collection, the Natalicio collection with you all uh, fills out is just, uh, again, humanizing in a lot of ways. Right. <clears throat> exactly. All right. So we got uh, some comments coming in, uh, Rudy uh, and uh, Gaglio saying that Dr. Natalicio was an amazing person. Again, the impact on this region, almost hard to deny here. But tell you what, we got to take that next break right now. Coming out of the break, we'll come back, continue talking with the Judd here about the collection and some of the other works in it that help, again, fill in these gaps in between some of the major achievements and impacts on the region. And again, how you can even participate in it yourself here. So we'll be back after this break with more of the El Paso History Radio Show here on News Radio 690 KTSM. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. 
Call him today. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call 915-592-4549, 915-592-4549. The True Crime Podcast, What Happened to Sandy Beal, investigates the alarming death of a young woman who dreamed of a career in law enforcement. Journalist Melissa Jeltson untangles the mystery at the heart of the investigation, revealing a troubling pattern by officials close to the case. I didn't take any of their crap because I could tell that they were hiding something. Listen to What Happened to Sandy Beal on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. The El Paso History Show with Andrew J. Polk is 10 a.m. this Saturday about San Elizario and El Camino Real de Tierra Adentro that runs through El Paso. The El Paso History Show is sponsored by Patrick Tuttle, Colwell Banker Heritage Real Estate, Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant in Canyon Tio, Mission Del Rey Southwest for gifts and decor, and by M1 EP Management Corporation, Saturday morning at 10 a.m. on News Radio 690 and streaming live on Facebook and YouTube. Anyone can get long covid even Caitlin, age 20. I got COVID in November 2020. In January, I started having long-term problems. I was a varsity soccer player in high school, and now I get winded just from walking. I can't remember things. It's just unbearable. Getting vaccinated against COVID-19 is the best way to prevent long COVID. Find vaccines near you at vaccines.gov. Paid for by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Join Brian Birds of the Brian Birds Home Selling Team every Sunday morning at 7.30 a.m. for real estate tips with Brian. The best in El Paso when it comes to selling. Brian is an expert in real estate. Listen every Sunday from 7.30 a.m. to 8 a.m. on KTSM AM 690 for tips on buying or selling your home. Info on what's going on in the market today and much, much more. Real estate tips with Brian every Sunday morning at 7.30 on KTSM AM 690 paid for by government.com. Have you heard? The United States Mint has issued the Morgan Silver Dollar for the first time in 100 years. Not only that, but they are also minted in 99.9% pure silver for the first time ever in history. Coin experts are calling this an amazing opportunity for anyone that knows the enduring popularity of Morgans. But you must hurry. Only 175,000 legal tender silver dollars were issued. These Morgan Silver Dollars are brand new, bright and shiny legal tender coins minted by the iconic Philadelphia Mint. Just call one 800 571 and you are guaranteed a new 99.9% pure silver Morgan dollar. The first time in history this has happened. But with limited quantities, you must call now to order. To learn more, call 1-800-571-6468. If you order now, you will receive a free collector bonus, a $25 value free with every order. Call 1-800-571-6468 now to secure your new Morgan silver dollars before they are gone. That's 1-800-571-6468. News Radio 690 KTSM. And now let's turn back the pages of time and return to the El Paso History Radio Show. Brought to you by Patrick Tuttle, Colwell Banker Heritage Real Estate, 915 588 1850. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant, 6761 Donovan Drive. By M1 EP Management Corporation. 915-592-4549. By Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino, with El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gift shopping. Here again, El Paso History, with Andrew J. Polk. This week, only in El Paso, Inc. This tax season, El Paso accounting firms are working to manage expectations during a historic IRS backlog. As raising $100 million in venture capital, a California-based startup is developing a tech hub in El Paso, Las Cruces, and three other cities. And the new commander of the Army's Joint Modernization Command talks about rapid technology change, learning, and the latest overseas conf- learning from the latest overseas conflicts and more. El Paso's business journal, El Paso Inc., is available for home or business delivery. And you can find them online at elpasoinc.com. They also run our promos, and we're happy to talk about them as uh, partners in well, discussing important local things. And also, of course, uh, again, find them online, elpasoinc.com. So, again, joined here in studio, as we have been this hour, by uh, Judd Burgess, owner or 
Jackson, one of the main owners of Brave Books here. Again, say it however you need to to not get in trouble and be able to not sleep on the couch. Okay, owner is fine. There we go. And we're talking about their your stewardship or really creation of the Natalicio collection out of the estate of the late Dr. Diana Natalicio, longtime UTEP president, 31 years as we did here. And so the way you've been turning this into accessible to the community, purchasable by the community is uh, certainly important. But beyond that, there's also the uh, preservation of other aspects of our history, because this is not something that you're even doing singly here. You also have other such uh, collections and exhibitions that you all are doing, right? Right, right. We just wrapped up a, a, a wonderful get together with Ho Baron, who I personally believe is a world-class artist. He's a visionary. Nobody has art like him. And so we basically, uh, that's our second time. Three months into our bookstore, we had people go to his home. You, everybody recognizes his home on Piedras because he's got all of his sculptures out there. Oh, that's yes. Mm-hmm. Right there. That he's one. Also oh, okay. That, yeah. He's a political agitator. And I mean, uh, so we have that in common. And uh, he's just uh, done a lot of very important things here in El Paso. So we wanted to introduce him to people and uh, that have never heard of him, young people in particular. And it was very well attended. Sold some of his uh, bronzes. And uh, it's just and then we also have uh, a collection that was donated. It was bequeathed to us by Juan Sandoval, the late Juan Sandoval, who was a 30 year librarian at UTEP. He headed up the Latino collections department. but he also amassed a collection of over 1,100 pieces of Latino art. Next to Cheech and Chong, you know, Cheech Marin, he has the biggest collection. Oh, uh, but wow. Okay. But Juan Sandoval collected 1,100 pieces. And we spoke, you, you talked about El Paso and, and how uh, Dr. Natalicio mentioned the disparity of the population versus the uh, student uh, makeup of Utah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a situation that's always occurred in El Paso. We live in an 82%, 83% Latino community, but yet we never get the kind of attention that it deserves. So Juan's collection, unfortunately, because uh, the leadership here just didn't really understand what it was, ended up going to Austin. Austin has maybe 20% Latinos, but yet they have a, a huge museum that's doubling in size dedicated to the Latino community, whereas here in El Paso, we're, we're basically shoehorning a $10 million uh, Latino Cultural Center with the library, so it's lose lose all the way around. Uh, when the a children's museum is making seventy five million, and uh, it just doesn't fit El Paso's population. So anyway, we have his collection, and we want to do the same thing. We're going to sell most of it. There's probably seventy five hundred books in that collection. Wow. Okay, so that's quite. I mean, give that on the scale of your bookstore. How how many do you think you that's can frame? Bookstore. That's altogether. another one. Oh, yeah. It okay. It's, it's filled up a two car garage. Wow. And I do this thing every every Sunday. I, I, I do this a Juan Sandoval mystery book box where I open up a box not knowing what's in it. <laughs> I've I've had boxes. Uh, I've had stuff that's had Tom Lee's signature, Jose oh, wow. Cisneros, Carl Herzog. These are all people you recognize yep. because mm-hmm. they're very important to El Paso. But Juan collected their books. And it's always fun to see what comes out. Some of it, you know, it's things that, you know, it's just things that Juan was interested in. But it's all important in the list. Absolutely here. So another clip we want to play from Dr. Natalicio kind of on that same point about looking at the demographics of the community versus the university and seeing if there are priorities that need to be reassessed there, but also more on getting, well, frankly, the university to partly on the trajectory to where it is now. In 1987, when I first became president, it was clear that we needed to become a different university um, if we were to compete nationally. And so the two things that we determined, the two bold goals were one, that our student demographics would mirror those of the surrounding region. So we were educating the people of this region. That's our mandate as a public university and we should have evidence that we're doing that. The second was that we would achieve national recognition for our research and for the quality of our programs. And why is that important? Well, because those students who are admitted to the university through our commitment to access deserve the very best degrees that they can be offered. It's our obligation to give them the best education that we can. And so what that typically means in U.S. higher education is you've got to have an active research program because in order to recruit faculty who have good reputations and build laboratories and do all these other things, you have to generate grant funding. And the only way you can do that is to hire people who are who have the skill 
who are researchers to begin with, but who have the skill of writing comp competitive proposals. And so we began that quest of trying to strategically build our research infrastructure, human and equipment and so on. Again, that was uh, Dr. Diana Natalicio during her previous interview, last interview on this program back in 2019, not too long after her retirement there and uh, a couple of years before her passing here. But again, been talking with uh, Judd Burgess about the Natalicio collection that has been made out of her state and the many publications, periodicals. We've been popping up some of the pictures here. You have some uh, bookshelves that we were looking at here. So this is just a, an assemblage of some of the things that are still more or less available. Exactly. I think that those might be photos of uh, our permanent collection, but yeah, there's still okay. plenty available. One thing I noticed, Andrew, is that she uses the word we. I like that. I mean, you know, oh, a person true. of her magnitude could say, I did this, I did that. But she always talked about the team effort in, in making UTEP what it is today. And there actually is that uh, the Noam Chomsky on language that we were talking that's a little bit that's about. That's personally signed to her. So, and that is interesting because, of course, she was uh, her a professional and uh, I guess academic more accurately background was on lingu in linguistics herself here but the way that she then focused on and, and the books here we were talking a little bit about it during the break here that uh, the titles of it people may be familiar with and there was one book that I remember uh, you know as a, a kid growing up that it was a funny title eats shoots and leaves and uh, you know an expression of you know the complexities of grammar and punctuation within the English language and that's the kind of thing that was also in her collection right right um, she had several books on, on uh, word origins and the creative uh, origins of words. I think, I really believe she found that entertaining because she had uh, many, many volumes on uh, like colloquialisms and, and slang. There was a slang dictionary. I grew up, I, that was one of my hobbies, slang, collecting slang, if you can believe that. But she, so I understand that, that mm -hmm. she would look at words and phrases and, and just uh, dissect them. I mean, she had that OCD personality, which served her well, but at the same time, mm -hmm. She knew how to cut loose with books like this on language, you know. So, I mean, that was entertainment for her. Uh, entertainment, professional interest makes a lot of sense when you think about uh, what kind of person might be, you know, attracted to being in such an important but complicated position as a university president for, you know, a you know, major city in West Texas. We may not think about ourselves such a way, but I think it does us a disservice to not do so. And her recognizing potential and, and need here is, well, one of the reasons that she is so regarded as she is as a figure of important and transition here in El Paso's history. And again, the way that's shown up by the collection is just fascinating to me and the way that people can still literally get a piece of it for themselves, plus you all preserving some of the more significant parts of it, is, is unique in the way that history can be interacted with here in town. You usually can't, I mean, if you go to Carlsbad Cavern, you want to take a chunk of it home, you're going home in handcuffs, among other things. So this is, again, a little <laughs> bit different. Uh, right. It's very different. I, I mean, people have a legal way to own her, her property, uh, but it's just, it's just wonderful to just, uh, you know, it's, it's one of the things I wanted to bring up, too, is when we have these uh, events where mm. we continue her legacy, I would love people who knew her very well to reach out to me because we'd like to have speakers mm. uh, and line up speakers that can just tell us about, you know, her baseball fascination or, uh, you know, things that, you know, maybe they taught side to side with her, you know, just continue you know developing this persona that nobody really knows so it's, it's it's about the books but it's also about people that knew her as well and so uh we're not limiting ourselves to just a bookstore but we want people that knew her personally to share that and I'm, I'm sure people would love to know more about it from people that knew her very deeply and very personally and with just one final question before we go to that next break here uh, from flaco jimenez asking how many books were in the collection in total before uh, you know, you ended up changing it into the both permanent exhibition side of it and the ones that are for sale. We had uh, probably about 550 in that range. I never really got down to counting them, but it was pretty much somewhere within that range. And that's that's just what I was able to obtain because some of these books left to, to individuals on the Saturday. Mm -hmm. So there's probably a, quite a bit more than that. So, again, we're talking about the lifetime collection or a good chunk therein of the you know, publications, periodicals, books, et cetera. I mean, artwork and other things. We've got a, got a picture up here of the outfit that she had uh, collected here. Um, and even just some of the other, you know, uh, smaller, you know, travel souvenirs, those kind of things that were a part of it here. So that is all what we're talking about, but collected over a lifetime. And there was also, you showed a picture of a local artist, Lillian Sandoval. Uh, people recognize her style. I called up artists and I said, you know what? We'd love for you to interpret 
Diana, Dr. Diana, not the least show in your style. And, and, you know, we'd be happy to sell it and give you a hundred percent of what we sell it for. Cause we like to support local artists as well. And so, uh, you know, she, she, uh, created that and she had several people, uh, call her up wanting the same portrait because that thing sold that portrait sold in 30 minutes. I believe it. Somebody saw it and immediately wanted it. She wanted another one for her brother. And then we had other people take her card uh, as well. Georgina Diaz as well. She did a, w a wonderful little piece and, and uh, donated it to us. So we're, we're going to build up a small collection of art that interprets Dr. Natalicio in the eyes of these particular artists as well. I think we got a, actually a small picture of you here, though. I think that's not the one you're talking about. That looks like the uh, the Nacho style. Nacho there. Garcia mm -hmm. Jr. did that. And that was uh, that's the original uh, piece that he did in colored pencil uh, that was given to her uh, when in 1998. Uh, UTEP was... Uh, named a particular what I, I can't read that but it was like a, a a university of note of some sort i mean there were a lot of awards that happened yes, over the years yeah, but yeah. tell you what we got to take that next break right now and you know given on the idea of the memories here we haven't been putting up the phone number much this program because we had a lot to get to here but we'll, we'll take a call if someone wants to call in during the break here and get a remembered during our last segment here that number to call is 915-544-5876 that's 915-544-ktsm El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to YouTube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the Old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. Sometimes it feels like your business is going 100 miles an hour, barely keeping up. Dell Technologies Advisors have the Windows PCs and tech you need to help you get past whatever's in front of you. Call an advisor today at 877-ASK-DELL. A start to a simpler experience with Windows 11 Pro. It's the sale worth shooting for. The Casa Buick GMC Slam Dunk Sales Event. Casa Buick GMC, the number one used car dealer, is fast breaking their top-ranked Buick and SUV lineup straight to your driveway. 2022 Buick Encore will be sold at the lowest advertised prices of the year. That's 24777 or 325 per month. And finally, we have 2022 GMC Sierras with 0% APR for immediate delivery. The Casa Buick GMC Slam Dunk Sales Event. Switch. Casa Buick GMC, next to the airport, Montana at Airway. Talk El Paso weekdays at 4 on News Radio 690 KTSM, breaking down the impact of the news on the borderland and beyond. Brought to you in part by Mission Del Rey Southwest, souvenirs, gifts, and decor. That's Talk El Paso Monday through Friday, 4 to 6 p.m., right here on News Radio 690 KTSM. The Tipping Point with Mike Tipton is coming back home to Fox Sports 1380 at iHeart Media Radio Station and the iHeart Radio app every Friday from 5 to 6 p.m. starting January 7th. Do you love sports, food, El Paso culture? Then this is the show for you. I'm Mike Tipton, and I'm inviting you to tune in to The Tipping Point with Mike Tipton on Fox Sports 1380, covering local, statewide, and national sports stories, news, and information that you want to talk about. The Tipping Point with Mike Tipton, Friday afternoons at 5 p.m. on Fox Sports 1380 and the iHeart Radio app. Asthma symptoms can attack anywhere, like on a city street. <coughs> now you can get fast relief anywhere with new improved Primatine Mist, the only FDA-approved asthma inhaler available over the counter. So whether you need relief of symptoms at the park or at your kitchen table, Primatine Mist starts working quickly, opening up your airways to restore free breathing. <sighs> For temporary relief of mild symptoms of intermittent asthma, use Primatine Mist and breathe easy again. Available at CVS, Rite Aid, and Walgreens. Use as directed. If you have a small business, Staples has your sign. Banners for my bakery? Staples has your sign. Oh, posters for my new pet store. Floor decals for a pharmacy. Every day, Staples Associates help every kind of small business create bold signs to make big impressions. And now get $10 off custom signs, banners, and posters when you spend $50 or more. This is your sign. So print it big at Staples. Ends 528. Visit staplesconnect.com slash thisisyoursign for details. 
This is Alec Baldwin. The new season of my podcast, Here's the Thing, is returning on iHeartRadio. It's my chance to talk to artists, policymakers, and performers, like comedian Tim Dillon. I couldn't tell you my congressman. I know every maitre d' of every <laughs> restaurant. I know who's working Craig's. I know who's working all the places I want to go. Who's at El Pastel? When I'm in town, you come with me. We're going to go to Craig's. Listen to Here's the Thing with me, Alec Baldwin, on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. News Radio 690, KTSM El Paso. And now let's turn back the pages of time and return to the El Paso History Radio Show. Brought to you by Patrick Tuttle, Colwell Banker Heritage Real Estate, 915 588 1850. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant. 6761 Donovan Drive by M1 EP Management Corporation 915 592 4549 by Mission Del Rey Southwest 1421 Lee Trevino with El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gift shopping. Here again, El Paso History with Andrew J. Polk. A couple other things we want to tell you about going on in and around town here uh, from our friends over at the Rio Grande chapter of the Daughters of the Republic of Texas uh, coming up on this Friday, April 8th at the Greenery Restaurant in Sunland Park Mall at 11 a.m. They'll be meeting to discuss Sam Houston and the Battle of San Jacinto as their focus here. They ask that you RSVP by April 6th by calling 915-760-5775. That's 915-760-5775 for uh, Patricia Kidney and the Rio Grande chapter of the Daughters of the Republic of Texas here. Also, again, we're going to be going out to uh, lunch at Pepe's today. Uh, We have Judd Burgess here in the studio with us, owner of uh, Brave Books. Are you going to be joining us today? I sure will. Excellent. So we'll be out there today. Again, if you want to find uh, Pepe's, they are out there at 6761 Donovan Drive. And again, the home of the one and only Margarita. So we did put out that phone number briefly before the break there because because we usually take you know more calls, but just the way we've been doing it today, very focused here. We do have a quick call on the line here. We do have uh, Raul joining us. Raul, thanks for calling in. Yeah, hi. Uh, right on to what Jeff said about how Pasos have historically been treated poorly. You know, I know Hoberon and I know Juan Sandoval, super dude. And right on to Dr. Natalicio for making UTEP a Pier 1 Research University. And talking about Dr. Natalicio and UTEP sports, I met Dr. Natalicio a couple of times. I had the privilege of no, of getting her to know her that way. Once at the Hoover House for drinks and dinner, mm. uh, honoring my ex-wife and some other UTEP professors. And another time at U- at the uh, uh, president's box to watch a game. They served drinks there and have dinner there while watching the game. Really, really nice. While I was there, I talked to one of UTEP's football administrators to ask him what percentage of UTEP's football players were local boys. And he answered me, quite a few. He was unwilling or unable to provide me with the percentage of players who were local boys that were playing on the field. So then I decided to bring the issue up with uh, Dr. Natalicio. Mm -hmm. And I pitched her with my idea and that of other local high school football fans that I knew well, was the proposal that the majority of UTEP's football players be from the best and smartest graduates of El Paso's high school and give them scholarships to play like they do those players that they bring and recruit from the outside uh, who usually produce losing seasons with about a third of the stadium being occupied. I told her that our boys could lose just as well as the players they bring from the outside of El Paso. And as you know, UTEP has had a long, long history of losing years in low attendance at games. I told her that the game attendance could probably even go up because now family members and parents and Good friends point. of our local boys would go out to see their boys play. But most importantly, that these young men could get scholarships and a university degree from UTEP. And you know what she told me? That she thought that was a good idea and she had thought it herself when she first took over, but when she proposed it that the local business community up in down North Mesa went nuts. And that's why it didn't happen. She also said at the time that one of the requirements for a Pier 1 university um, designation would be that they had some kind of football you know, uh, program going on. So that's what I had to share. I uh, appreciate it. I mean, and memories of this person abound within the community as given the impact that he had. Again, the collection kind of exemplifies that. I mean, we had a couple examples that we have put up uh, throughout this program of uh, some of the books that were, uh, you know, uh, written and uh, inscribed to her on the inside here. This one, the Ray Sanchez about the 1966 victory of the of UTEP Miners basketball team. And one of the other ones that we didn't quite get to yet was the uh, uh, the Order of the Eagle. Uh, the Mexican Order of the Eagle here, and uh, written by the author here to her here. But I mean, there's so much more. And again, you'll be doing this exhibition uh, going on for a while here, right? Right, John. Two or three more weeks. And one uh, one thing I wanted to say was his name Raul. Yes. 
Uh, Raul, Aaron Jones. When you get a local local player, you never know where they're going to go, and he ended up with Green Bay. And uh, every time he scores a touchdown, which is often, he does a nine one five and oh, he yeah. salutes El Paso. And so, you know, I love what you said. I mean, I don't know how feasible it is, but you know, he did end up on the UTEP team, and he really was instrumental in helping UTEP win a lot of games. And he ended up at, at Green Bay, and yeah, represents us well, and loves to do it. Absolutely. I mean, I am a particular supporter of local things, all things local in all ways here. So, would love to see that. I know that. Uh, sports recruiting is its own particular world and probably better addressed by uh, our sister stations, Fox sports, 1380 and particularly the local show there, the tipping point with Mike tip, but maybe I'll put that in his ear and see what he can say about that here. But otherwise, again, we have been talking about the Natalicio collection and all that has come along with it here. We have been talking with Judd Burgess, owner of brave books, the stewards of the collection. Again, that's the best title I could come up with here for I you like all. It. Okay. If, if you like it, I'll go with it here. A lot but- of responsibility there. Absolutely. And that's, I think, the real key point of here. And the idea of preserving our history and all that comes with it is important here. But that's bringing us to the end of the program here. I want to thank everyone who did tune in, uh, chime in over online, or just participate in the show that way again. Uh, thanks, Judd. We're going to head out to Pep User coming out there, and we'll see you out there. So join thank us out there. Everybody. Otherwise, we'll be back next week talking with Al Borrego and the uh, Cultural Heritage Society of the Camino Real de Tierra Adentro. Stay tuned for that. Otherwise, have a great weekend, y'all. Thank you for listening to the El Paso History Radio Show. We hope you'll join us again next Saturday morning, 10 to noon. And be sure to tell a friend about us. Brought to you by Patrick Tuttle, Colwell Banker, Heritage Real Estate, 915-588-1850. By Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant, home of the Juan and only Margarita. By M1 EP Management Corporation. By Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. With El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gift shopping. Thank you for joining us from the studios of News Radio 690, KTSM AM, El Paso. Do you have unfiled tax returns or owe the IRS or state more than $10,000? If you don't take action now, your tax problem is going to get worse, much worse. Seizure of property, bank levies, wage garnishments, and potential criminal prosecution. And if you owe the IRS back payroll taxes, chances are you will be visited at your home or business by an IRS agent. Don't be 